Hey there! Today we're going to have a look at a pen by this brand, Gerbin, now known as Jacques Herbin. A uh, very old company, 1670, they were found, founded, sorry. And uh, they are known, I think, in the modern day fountain pen world mainly for their inks and maybe their wax seals and sealing wax. But they occasionally stray into the world of, of pens. They started with little roller balls and now they make fountain pens, some of which are in rather interesting woods and are very expensive. I'm, I'm thinking, I, I think I saw a price of 700 uh, Canadian uh, dollars on the Applebaum website. But here we have a pen that is relatively more affordable. The names of the pens are sort of nautical themed, so this line of pens is the Sloop. Uh, and, uh, you know, just in case you've never seen that, Gerbin's logo also is nautical themed. So, we have that. This pen was sent to me by Applebaum. I appreciate it. I'm going to cover the parts of this pen. I'll do a writing sample and I'll tell you what I like about it and what I don't like about it. Let's get started. Okay. Jacques Herbin, the sloop in the amber finish with the gold trim next to a Lamy Safari. You can see they are a comparable size. This pen is a bit heavier though. The box of the pen uh, strongly, I don't know if it's just me, it reminds me of L'Occitane. Their packaging and their color schemes, but maybe that's just me. Jacobin Paris 1670. What do we have? We have a nice little bag that feels like it's linen, which I think is very cute uh, to carry around your pen. And that's it. There is nothing else in the box except for the bit tied there. And that to me also I find very L'Occitane with a little sort of hamper with little things strapped to it. But maybe that's just me. So what do we have? Well, we have this Applebaum, right? Applebaum send this guarantee warranty booklet, which is nice. And now we have the world's tiniest book. It is very small, but it's kind of cute. And uh, it talks about the history of Gerbin. It is in full color, which is kind of neat. Uh, you have the some of their inks, right? Uh, which I think is nice. So we have the uh, the essential inks, we have the perfumed inks, we have the special uh, uh, inks, uh, which they, uh, they like, like the Amethyst Lural, and then, you know, they, they had a bunch of these. Uh, then they talk about their writing instruments, and they have dip nibs, dip nib holders, even have some paper stuff. Uh, <clears throat> I think it's 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 actually quite cute. It's a little sort of mini catalog which also has some history, and it's it's pretty nicely printed. It's not a <clears throat> super crisp print. It, it 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 has slightly it has some texture on the paper, but I think it's cute. It's nice. It's kind of fun. Now let's talk about the the pen, the parts of the pen. Well, one thing that, that I think kind of stands out a bit in this pen is the, the gold accents. I kind of doubt they're actual gold, but they are quite nice. So you have that nice sort of brushed finish. On the finial there, we have a clip. The clip works. It's not super tight, which I like. It's not too loose either, so it's a really good mix. We have a center band, which has nothing on it. Uh, then we have the barrel tapering down, and then we have this end cap, which also is that sort of brushed uh, metal again. Pen unscrews. We have a nice uh, long section, which is quite comfortable to hold. The pen posts, for those of you who like that, then it becomes quite long, but it does post. It's a little wobbly, but you can make it post. The pen is fed by cartridge or converter. It did, it did come with a converter, <laughs> and no Jehovah ink in it for the record, and here's the nib, which is rather a nice pattern, it almost looks like a fingerprint to me, but it has that little uh, Jacobin boat, it has the Jacobin name on it, uh, and it says, um, I thought it said 1670, no sorry, it says Paris, yeah 1670 and F for fine. Uh, it's a steel nib, it's gold colored, but it's a steel nib, plastic feed, and that's pretty much all there's to it. So let's see how this pen writes. And then I go back a long way so I can call him Jackie H. Uh, this is the fine. 
steel nib and the ink is Ackermann Delft Blau, washable blue. This pen is not my property, so I like to put washable inks in them. Um, the nib is quite feedbacky, not not scratchy. It's just a very feedbacky nib, and I I will let you listen to this for just a second. Again, uh, not scratchy. It's just very feedback. You get a lot of tactile feedback as you write with this pen. However, even when you write very quickly, no real skipping, it's, it's very well behaved, it does very well. So I, I do really like that. As to wetness, this is not the world's wettest ink, but it's not a gusher of a pen. Line variation, as always, very careful. It's not advertised as a flex pen or a flex nib. You can squeeze out a tiny bit of line variation, but it can be, again, be very, very careful. Finally, there is the reverse writing, which is possible, and turns the fine nib into an extra fine, or maybe even extra, extra fine. You see, it does start to run a little dry, and it may become a little harder to read, but in principle, you could use the pen upside down if you need an even finer line. Okay, that was the demonstration of the pen. Let's talk about what I like and what I don't like about the pen. Okay, what do I like, what do I not like about the Jacquardin Sloop? Well, there are some things to like, I would say. It writes very pleasantly. Yes, there is a lot of feedback but it's not a scratchy nib, it's just a lot of tactile feedback. Some people really like this. Think of it as an Aurora pen on steroids. It's a lot of feedback as you write. But again, no scratchiness, just that, that it's not super smooth. The advantage of that is that there's no over-polishing, no baby's bottoms on the nib, and it writes solidly. I also like that there's a good eye for detail. Uh, the These metal... Uh, uh, Parts look nice, also I think match the color of this particular material quite nicely. So I, I like that, I think that's very nice. Um, all of that's good. Cartridge converter, nice, simple, reliable filling system, not a lot of movable parts. If the converter breaks, you throw it out, you buy a new one. It is standard international, so it's really easy to deal with. I don't have any issues with any of that. My problem is the price. Uh, at, at, at Appelbaum, not including the, the, the Dutch 21% VAT, and converted to US dollars, it would be about 235 US. And that I find a lot. For this pen, steel nib, cartridge converter, uh, resin parts, I think that's pushing it. And I gave this to a few people at a pen meet and they said, yeah, this is a really nice 100 maybe a hundred and fifty dollar pen not a 235 dollar pen and my issue with this is that there's a couple of ins and outs to this first of all if you're going to charge that for a pen it has to be on point and it's not uh, here for example you see in this end cap the alignment is not entirely flush with the 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 rest of the cap so on this side the metal sticks out a bit and on this side it is moved a little bit there, if you if if that makes sense. So this is not this this finial is not 100% flush with the pen. On the end near the barrel, it is. So that is good. But if I'm going to spend 235 on a pen, then I want it to be perfect. And I don't see this as perfect. It's not perfection. It's good, but it's not perfection. Uh, the nib, the feedback, yeah, that's that's personal. Some people would love it. Some people won't. So I mean, I I, I can't really comment on that. For me it could be a little smoother, but that's personal preference. It's just the price. I, I simply don't see that value in this pen. If it would be $100 cheaper, I would say, yeah, good. Everything's balanced. The, the, the price, the quality of the pen. But now I think it's, it's too much. And to give you an idea, this is 235 US. 
uh, this pen turned in Italy uh, is 168 US and uh, if I would have to pick I would pick the Furore Leonardo Officina Italiana Furore in this case a Smeraldo finish I would pick this any day of the week over this Chacabin personal personal choice but that'd be my choice now just to make sure there for sure are going to be people who say yes but you love your classic pens LB5 and that is acrylic and and that is in cartridge converter and it is over a thousand dollars indeed so having said that interesting pen I'm not sure if I would buy this especially not at that price but it writes very well solid writing and I'm sure there will be people out there who absolutely love this design. So, there's something for everyone that's the nice thing about the pen world, right? I hope this was useful. A very kind thank you to Yoast for lending me the pen. And I'd like to see you later. Bye-bye.